Okay, um, you know, I rant on about uh, door knocking and, uh, um, you know, again, I, I never say uh, anything really negative about mailing out letters or leaving notes on doors and things like that. I usually don't leave notes on doors. However, um, there's a property here in the south side of my my town which is Phoenix um, where it's just uh, he's an old, older guy and he's owned this property for years um, but I saw on you know the website that I'm looking at that he tried to sell it for about 25 grand in 2016 he's an old man um, and uh, you know I knocked on the door I'm not sure if the doorbell worked um, and I tried knocking on like the screen door like you know, making a loud noise. He's probably a really old guy. Maybe he can't hear the door, but again, I just left a, um, a note on the door. Um, the property that he has is, uh, is a, uh, just a basically like land with a foundation and some bricks. It doesn't even have a roof. Um, but that's a, like a developer's dream. If he's trying to sell it for uh, about 25 grand, um, in that neighborhood, it renovated is, um, right around 160. So, uh, you know, if he wanted to sell that for 25 grand, I would absolutely lock him up for that. If he wanted 35, um, probably cost about 50 to fix it. Um, so you can make some money off that. There's some developer somewhere that will, will take that on. Um, you know, there's, there's different kinds of buyers out there. Uh, let's talk about buyers for a minute. You know, you got your buyers that really, they don't want to do a lot of work. <laughs> they uh, either do the work themselves or they, um, for whatever reason, um, you know, they, they don't want to do that much work. You know, they just want to put carpet and paint up and then they want to resell it. You get those guys. Uh, you get guys that'll take anything anywhere. Um, you know, big houses, little houses, or they only do like little houses. They only do like shitty houses in, uh, shitty areas. Like, you know, they love that kind of shit. So they run really, uh, you know, tight crews that work, don't work for a lot of money. And, um, you know the it doesn't cost them a lot of money to to reconstruct something um and then you got the people that are your pro door knockers you know just, it just needs to really make sense for them and again they get wholesale pricing on contractors because they're doing they're sticking with the same kind of crews um and they're giving them repeat business over and over and over so a contractor will actually give you a discount if you're doing multiple um deals like if you're doing 10 or 15 deals uh, and they know that you keep doing them and doing them over and over and over. You, they have a good relationship. The house flipper and the contractor have a really good relationship. And, um, you know, as long as he gets repeat business, he's happy going in there and renovating the property. He works hard for you. You don't have to really worry about him a lot to, um, you know, make sure sh shit gets done. Um, and again, th those are the type of contractors you want to go with. But, um, you know, those contractors won't give the newbies the same type of discount. Um, you got to keep business coming over and over and over for them. So contractors are going to charge you if they first meet you top dollar. Um, so, you know, again, I've never flipped a house, but I know that shit. Um, you get better pricing when you're, when you're constantly flipping houses and you have multiple deals locked up, um, no matter what it looks like, you know what I mean? So, um, uh, you get your husband and wife, uh, flippers who just got out of, um, uh, flipping school and it's our first or second property you know they're, they're not used to you know they pretty much pay top dollar um, or not um, you know it just depends um, this market right now in America in 2017 everything you know in the Phoenix market everything about under two hundred thousand dollars is definitely being taken on by uh, any sort of a cash buyer so it's still a hot market um, upwards towards two and three hundred thousand dollars it's kind of slowing down a little bit but again there's always a buyer for something there's there's hedge funds out there there's cash buyers there's people that are just getting into the industry people that are pros um big ass companies who are doing like they'll do renovations and they'll do like and they'll hold the property like they'll, they'll they'll build something from the ground up and then they'll hold the property so a property like this would be perfect for them like it's in a decent neighborhood and the arv works for them you know i could uh, buy it at 25 grand and, and still make 20 grand or 25 grand off a property like that so um really old guy he tried to sell last year um and maybe nobody's knocked on his door or nobody's um you know he's never answered the door or whatever again i just left a note 
um, vacant houses are hit less than pre foreclosures. Pre foreclosures, like everybody's going after. Um, for the vacant properties, it's just kind of few and far between, but there are people that are coming by, um, and you just got to kind of maybe give them the right price. Um, so there's a lot of old, really old families in this part of town, um, you know, in South Phoenix that uh, they still have their houses and they've given it to their kids. Um, a lot of like Latino and African American families that you know they they basically um, kept their house through the years and then they've given it to their their kids or whatever. Um, but again, always opportunity somewhere. Things change um, in any sort of condition. Sometimes people just sell because they want to sell, um, or it's the time. But you know, again, there's always opportunity out there as long as you're out there really doing um, the door knocking. So um, I got a call from my assistant uh, about a call that she did last night and she's got this lady that wants to sell um, I'm gonna go hit that door tonight so um, again you know I have different avenues of how I make my money not just door knocking but I have somebody calling for me um, you know when you have the money you can do mailing campaigns and bandit signs are kind of really watered down here I wouldn't do bandit signs in uh, Phoenix personally but like there's guys that I see them all the time and they're out there um, you know it morphs like if you want some if you're working out of your house and, and somebody needs their hair done or their nails done or they do a pet grooming service, like Bandit Signs works for that in Phoenix, but everybody's fucking doing Bandit Signs in, you know, Phoenix. So it's really, really watered down. Um, if you got some extra cash, you know, I would spend some money on some mailing yellow letters, but the right yellow letter where it's like, you know, you it looks written. Um, there's companies that actually do that, that can actually, there's actually a machine actually that you can um, it's a company and it, you can write your uh, your yellow letter which says hi my name is Nathan I'm interested in buying your home and the machine will mimic that actual handwriting um, and then you can mail out you know 500 a thousand letters for um, a couple thousand bucks you know what I mean and, and you can do it like on a continual basis um, and the yellow letter is actually that, that that's how they package the yellow letters um, they, it's a lined yellow piece of lined mead paper um, with your name and your phone number on it um, and make sure you use a call forwarding number not your actual cell but um, uh, you know and they mail it out and then they actually stuff the envelope the way that you're supposed to stuff it which is you just put it inside an envelope and then it's written out um, like it's a letter from their family member or something like that you know what I mean like it's a, a letter from uh, you know your cousin long lost cousin that you're writing them a letter from Florida or whatever so it looks like that and then it's not even um, the, the the adhesive part where you're adhe what is it adhesive part is not licked and it's just kind of folded in and it goes in the in the mail and comes in your mail and they'll open it up because it looks like you know um, it, it's it's really written out to them and it's personally for them so that's how you actually do a yell letter you know you see a lot of these door hangers or they're, they're mailers that are they look all professional and things like that we pay for cash for your house it's just white noise so a yellow letter that's actually written out and looks like a yellow letter will actually get opened and looked at so um, and again that's the kind of um, person that you want to be when you're at the door you don't want to you know pull up um, with a, a suit and tie on you know you, you want to be in jeans and just be like you know I'm interested in buying your house so um, uh, again you know you're selling you're sending your 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 yellow letters out like you should be or your mailers out like you should be knocking the door it, the same kind of concept where it's very personable and direct um, and that's what gets you started in this industry remember Nate Ness education right now um, is for the guys that are out there and they're struggling to get deals okay that's what I'm all about I know how to get deals I know what to say um, but my brain has been conditioned because I've continually knocked on doors that's the reason why I'm able to get deals um, if I can get in front of anybody I feel like I can lock up a deal all right I just need to get through the door that's what the follow-ups are for but again if you're just getting started um, don't mail out yellow letters just get out there and start knocking on doors and, and condition your brain to actually um, you know know how to talk to somebody when they talk um, or when they're speaking and know what motivation is and know what good leads are and when you're screening leads you need to know what a good leads are it doesn't necessarily mean it just has a shit ton of equity there could be some other reasons as well um, so again I know what a good lead looks like I know what to say when to say it um, and it's because I've conditioned my brain over the years um, to um, actually know what to say so again you, you have to learn before you earn um, 
and so you're not going to be the best at it when you first start but if you do get out there and you start working um, it's eventually going to work for you absolutely okay so nate ness back to knocking doors